you so much and and welcome everybody thanks for joining so um my name is guy salton i'm a solution engineering lead at, at run ai and um, and today we'll talk about uh, kubernetes for for ai workloads and we'll see what works and what doesn't really work <laughs> and uh we'll even uh, have a, a demo so we we can run some jobs live and um, so i hope that that'll be cool and we we create a, a public github repository with the, the example that we're gonna show in the demo. So uh, we'll post it later um, on the chat. Um, so um, let's begin, let's start with covering, you know, what we're gonna cover today is as part of the agenda. Uh, we'll start by talking about the world of AI and how it's uh, adopting containers. So I assume that uh, most of you are familiar with containers and um, maybe mostly for, uh, you know, deploying containers and microservices. Um, as part of um, you know application deployment, but um, we'll talk about how uh, the world of AI and deep learning is also adopting containers, and then we'll talk a bit about Kubernetes um, and how and if it can help us orchestrate orchestrate containers for uh, running AI workloads. Um, so we'll see what works, and we'll also then see the limitations of, of Kubernetes and what what doesn't work. Uh, so to begin with. Um, I, I think maybe we'll just start with a, a quick poll. Uh, so I'll, I'll pop it up now and I'd love if you can, um, yeah, I'll just get your familiarity with um, with AI and, and deep learning um, to see you know how, how deep uh, we should go. And I see, okay. I see a lot of uh, people are pretty familiar, maybe not very familiar. Uh, some of you, you know, heard about it, but uh, maybe didn't dig too deep into it. Uh, so this is great. Thank you for uh, participating. Um, great. So, um, so what what we've seen in recent years is, and yeah, I think I'll, I'll end the poll now. So again, thank you for answering. Um, is that the AI ecosystem is adopting containers. It's built around containers. And for those, those of you who are familiar with AI and maybe even played around with it a bit, you might heard about some of these tools and frameworks that um, we show here on the right-hand side, like TensorFlow and PyTorch and Keras and Jupyter, um, maybe some other uh, frameworks uh, that are designed especially, especially for Kubernetes, like Kubeflow um, and Argo. Uh, so these are now like, uh, you know, the most popular tools in, in the world of AI and they're all built on containers. Um, and even NVIDIA, um, and we'll, we'll talk a bit more uh, as part of this session about the NVIDIA GPUs that are um, highly and, and very popularly used for AI workloads. Uh, NVIDIA released uh, their NGC, which is a, a container uh, registry with pre-trained models, Docker images, Helm charts, things like that, that are uh, meant especially for, for AI experimentation on containers. Um, so, so we see that, yeah, um, not only the world of, uh, of software development and microservices deployment is using containers, but um, the AI is also adopting containers. Um, um, yeah, very much in the, the recent years. And um, as you probably know, and we'll now, uh, launch another poll, uh, is that, yeah, one of the popular or maybe the de facto standard for container orchestration is Kubernetes. So yeah, let's see how familiar you are with, with Kubernetes. I'm launching another poll now. And here, yeah, we see that a lot of you are pretty familiar as well as uh, some of you are very familiar with Kubernetes and that's great because we, we are going to show Kubernetes today in the demo as well. Um, so for those of you who haven't heard about it or not know much, uh, Kubernetes is uh, an open source tool uh, originally released by Google and it's, um, it's commonly used today in many, many companies uh, for container orchestration, right? So, uh, you know, companies that are developing software, developing applications um, and using containers, they usually do it with microservice architecture. Each microservice is, is deployed as, um, as a container, uh, but they want 
to have things like availability and portability, being able to easily deploy these containers to different environments, uh, maybe some on-premise, some in the cloud. Um, they want to uh, declaratively define you know, the state of the application and uh, they can easily compose that using YAML files and they want to easily scale to support you know, the load from users. So Kubernetes helps with that as well. So I, I think yeah, I recently read that CNCF said that um, from uh, companies that are using containers in production, uh, more than 78% are already using Kubernetes. So Kubernetes is, is de facto the, the new standard for container orchestration, again, designed mainly for microservices deployment. But today we, we're talking more about AI. Um, so uh, AI is, is a bit different, right? Um, AI, uh, first of all, in terms of the accelerators that the AI workloads run on, um, you would see that it, it won't be only on classic CPUs. Uh, there are new accelerators that are more suitable for AI workloads, mainly GPUs, um, maybe also ASICs in the future, um, as well as that um, the whole development and execution of AI workloads is based on experimentation. And we, we'll talk about that. And this is, this is different from um, you know, just deploying microservices. Um, so, so let's go and, and, and see a live, a real example, and we'll go into a demo and we'll even run some, some workloads today and train a deep learning model on, on Kubernetes. So um, this link um, is, is a public GitHub repository that contains a, a containerized uh, deep learning model and we'll go and, and show it to you. So it's now also uh, you, is available on, on the chat. You should uh, be able to go and you can clone it. You can fork it if you want. Uh, and let's see what we have here in this uh, repository. So this is uh, a repository. It contains a, a deep learning application, which is again, containerized. What does that mean? It means that we have a Docker file um, and we can see in the Docker file that the, the base image of this Docker file is NVIDIA CUDA 10. CUDA is uh, the, the framework that NVIDIA released for developing um, the AI models on, uh, especially, especially yeah, for AI models and for running on, on GPUs. Um, it's based on Ubuntu 18.04. And you can see that the data science framework that is used here is, is TensorFlow, where we're going to install TensorFlow on our container, as well as Keras, which is another framework. Uh, we're going to use Python 3.6. And yeah, we won't go over everything here, but we're going to install um, some additional packages and dependencies that our model actually need. Um, and then we would go and run our model. So you see that there is some entry point script here that will run uh, once the once the container is up. Uh, you can also see that, um, you know, we'll talk a bit about what does it mean to train a deep learning model. So uh, a, a deep learning model is, you know, at the end of the day is developed you know, with, with code Python in, in this example. And once the model is already developed, uh, we want to train it um, on a data set um, and then help it learn and, uh, and then be able to, you know, give us results. And then eventually it will be deployed to production. It will be able to serve requests from real users and give us some, some interesting, you know, analytics based on, on some data. So here we're going to copy uh, a data set called CIFAR10. And this is um, a very popular data set um, for, um, for AI. Um, it contains you know, a lot of different images. So these will be the data that we're going to train our model on. And we're then going to copy um, you know, our Python file and, and run it. So um, we can even go pretty quickly through that. That won't be the main focus of, of the demo, but um, here is the actual Python file. Um, and you, you see that we... Uh, we're going to define here things like uh, the image size, so how many uh, images we're going to use for this execution, and the batch size. And of course, these can be you know overridden uh, to the container as, as environment variables. Um, but of course, you, you this repository is public, so you can go and, and play around with it and have a deeper look at it. Um, but uh, but yeah, exactly. This is this is what we have here. So we have you know our Python code defining. You know, the, the model, we're going to mount a data set into it and we're going to run it all 
uh, from a Docker file. And uh, prior to this webinar, I already built a Docker image from this Docker file and pushed it to uh, a Docker registry that we have in, in Google Cloud. So uh, we'll see once we go and uh, want to run this model on Kubernetes, I'll show you the actual image that was already built and, and pushed. So let's go and open the terminal and I'll show you what I prepared here and we'll also again run uh, a live example. So here I prepared a few files and, and we're going to explain a bit about Kubernetes. I know that most of you are familiar in a way with, with Kubernetes, which is great because we're going to talk about um, uh, you know, some basic concepts of, of Kubernetes. So first of all, um, what we, uh, you know, let's say you are a DevOps engineer or MLOps engineer, and, you know, there's a, a research team in your organization and they want to run AI workloads. Maybe you, you already bought a few GPUs, whether it's on-premise GPUs or uh, cloud-hosted GPUs, and you want to help manage this operation and, and let the researchers in your organization run and train their models on GPUs. So what we have uh, in here, I have a Kubernetes cluster that is uh, deployed on, on Google Cloud. Um, and I can show you if I run kubectl um, get pods, sorry, get nodes. I'll see all of the nodes of uh, my cluster. You know what, I'm actually looking at a different cluster. So let's change the context. We now should look at the, uh, the relevant cluster. Sorry, did I do? Yeah, I need to. Oh, right. No, I'm, I'm at the right cluster. Um, so I have my Kubernetes master node. I have another CPU node, and I have two nodes that have GPUs. Um, and just to show you, I'm going to use a, a different CLI than kubectl, something that we developed in, internally in Run AI um, called Run AI top node. This will show us exactly how many GPUs I have on each of my nodes. So on the master node, I don't have any GPUs as well as on this node, I don't have any GPUs, but I have two nodes that do have GPUs, uh, this worker GPU three and worker GPU four, each of them has two GPUs, okay? So I want to use these nodes to run uh, my containers on them and train my model. Um, now, let's say you have, you know, a team of researchers and you want to somehow let them, you know, fairly share the GPUs in the cluster. You don't want, uh, you know, one researcher to use all of the GPUs and then cause starvation where the other researchers won't be able to use any GPUs. So the way that you can do this in Kubernetes is you can create namespaces. Okay. So I already created uh, some namespaces. So I can go and run the kubectl get an S, it stands for namespaces, and I have a bunch of namespaces here, but uh, let's just focus on the, the two ones here in the bottom. Uh, one namespace is called team A, the other one is called team B. Um, let's say I want, you know, the researchers from different teams to use, you know, different namespaces. So the researchers that belongs to team A, I would want them to run their jobs on the team A namespace and uh, the researchers that belong to team B, they will run their jobs on the team B namespace. Um, then you can also, if you just don't want, you want to make sure that researchers from team B don't run jobs on the, on the team A namespace and then use, you know, um, the GPUs that are, that are not assigned to them, you can create, you know, a service account and roles and then role bindings in Kubernetes. I, this is, I won't go too deep into this in the, in the webinar today, but this is just to define, you know, your users in Kubernetes, um, which can be defined as something called a service account, and then make sure that, you know, specific users only have access to a specific namespace. So users, researchers of, of that belongs to team, team A will only be able to run jobs on the team A namespace. They won't be able to do anything on other namespaces. So you, you can define this in, in Kubernetes and um, uh, I can share maybe a link on, on how to set this up, but this is, doesn't really relate to, to AI. It's a, more like a general uh, thing in, in Kubernetes. Um, but also, so even though you know, we already created these namespaces and let's say we gave you know, some users access only to team A and then some other users access only to team B, um, we can then also use another thing in Kubernetes called resource quota. So a resource quota can be used 
to limit the amount of compute resources per namespace. So here, when we say compute resources, we will talk mainly about GPUs, but this can also be you know, RAM memory, it can be CPUs. Uh, so I'll show you what we have here. If we look at the other YAML files uh, that we have here, we have this GPU quota team A and GPU quota team B. If I go and yeah, I'm gonna show you these files. So this is defining something called a resource quota in Kubernetes. And like I said, it's going to, uh, I, I'm gonna give it some name. This is just a name. It's the name of this resource quota you know, entity. I call this resource, resource quota GPU quota team A. Uh, it's going to limit the resources for the namespace team A. And then I chose which resources I would like to limit and what would be the limitation. So I said, okay, for team A namespace, I only want to allow using one GPU. Okay, I don't want to allow more than that. And then same thing for team B. So for team B, you know, they would run on their team B namespace and they will also be limited to using one GPU. This way, um, there won't be any starvation across the teams, right? Uh, we won't be able to, one, like a researcher from team A won't be able to use all the GPUs uh, from all of the, the, the cluster and, and then uh, cause starvation to the other users. So uh, to apply these resource quotas, I can then just use the kubectl apply command and then, you know, give this YAML file and this would now uh, apply and create these resource quota um, on the different namespaces. I can apply both YAML files. You know what, then maybe I'll just do it full screen. That'll be easier. I see that it says that they are configured. We should now be able to see these. So if I go and run kubectl get resource quota um, on the namespace team A, okay? I will see that I now, I have a resource quota. The name of the resource quota is called GPU quota team A, and it would limit the uh, this namespace to use up to one GPU. So I see that the limit is one GPU, currently zero GPUs are being used. Same thing if I look at the resource quota entities in team B, I'll see a similar thing. So we created namespaces, we then, uh, uh, provided resource quota to limit the amount of GPUs that can be used for each namespace. Now let's go and run a job. So, you know, we, we saw the, um, the GitHub repository and we saw the Docker file, we saw the, you know, the, the Python code and the data. We then built an image from this Docker file. So this image contains the code, it contains all of the packages, all of the frameworks, all of the dependencies, the data, everything is inside. And it even has an entry point instruction inside the image. So it knows what to do. Whenever like the container starts, it would just go and, and start you know, a script that will uh, install the dependencies and then run um, the, the Python code, which will actually train my, my deep learning model. Um, and now, I have this image. Let's see how, how I run this image on, on Kubernetes. So I have another YAML file in this folder, which I called AI train job. And let's go and see the content of this file. And then we'll run a, a job. So you see, and I don't know how uh, uh, you guys are familiar with uh, a job in Kubernetes, right? So this is, it's not a pod, it's not a deployment. It's a, it's a resource of Kubernetes called a job. Um, and, you know, for microservices development and deployment, you would usually deploy something called a deployment or, you know, that behind the scenes will deploy pods and replica sets um, because these pods are some things that, you know, they can just run in the background and, um, and serve requests. But here, we don't want to do that. We want uh, to define, um, you know, a job that will run to completion and unattended job that will run to completion. Why? Because, you know, we have our model, our deep learning model, we have the data, you know, once we run our Python code, it should start training the model and what this training uh, activity will eventually be completed. It will finish training on all of the, the data set. And then we want this job to terminate and free up the resources. So for this type of uh, workloads, a job is more suitable than a pod or a, or a deployment, okay? And 
Now, um, let's go and see what else we have here in this file. So I'm going to define, you know, give a name to this job. I call it job one. I choose which namespace this job needs to run on. And I chose a, a TMA namespace. And then under spec, I can choose the image. So under the containers, I say, I want to run this image. So this quick start image is the image that I built um, from you know, the Docker file I, I showed you earlier. And I pushed it to GCR, right? Google Container Registry. And this, by the way, is also public. You can also uh, pull this image and try to run it yourself. So I can also paste it on the chat. And once I define the image, I can then uh, ask for how many resources and which resources I want to allocate to this job, to this container. So um, here I said I want to use nvidia.com slash GPU. This is how you refer to GPUs in Kubernetes. Um, so unlike other compute resources, if some of you are familiar with you know, allocating CPUs or memory to a job or a pod, with the other resources, you can set a request and you can set a limit. So a request would be, you know, how much I want to make sure that for sure, you know, my, my pod or my job gets this amount. So if I say, let's say eight CPUs, then this would be the minimum. Uh, and I can also set a limit of like, let's say for like 16 CPUs, meaning, you know, don't run if you don't have eight CPUs available, but also make sure that you don't go over 16 CPUs. With GPUs, Kubernetes doesn't currently have this support, so um, there's no, no point in, in setting both limits and requests. So you can just set one of them and it would be the same. Like the, the limit would mean, you know, if I ask for one GPU, the job won't be able to run if I don't have a GPU available and it will never use more than one GPU. So it's, it's both the request and the limit. Mm. Uh, I see some questions here. Let's see if I, I can answer them you know, during our, the, the webinar. So regarding FPGA accelerators, um, we, uh, especially like myself in, in Run AI, we work with many enterprise customers and, and companies that are you know, doing deep learning on Kubernetes. I don't, I, I don't think I've ever seen FPGA accelerators being used. Uh, it's currently mostly, mostly GPUs by NVIDIA. Uh, but we are sure that there will be other accelerators, you know, Intel are working on their own um, AI chip and uh, Google are working on their own called the TPUs. They're also another company in the UK called Graphcore. Uh, so these, we believe, will slowly enter the market, but currently it's mostly NVIDIA GPUs. Um, so, uh, yeah, I see that there is also um, a request here for the uh, definition of uh, service accounts. Um, and uh, cluster roles and roles. I'll, I'll check and, and send these uh, materials later on. Um, another question from a sim. Um, since we already have a quota for the namespace, why do we need to put a resource limit on the job? So yeah, think about it this way. Um, here I set the resource quota as, as one GPU and I'm in the job I'm asking for one GPU. Uh, so maybe you don't really see the point here, but Potentially, I can say, okay, the um, I can say that the 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 namespace um, the namespace would have a quota of two GPUs, and then two users can each run their own job um, and ask for one GPU. But here, um, I define the GPU for the the number of GPUs for the job, and in the resource quota, I limit the number of GPUs that will be available at any given time for a namespace. So it can be the same number, or it can be that the resource quota on the namespace would, would be larger. Um, but if this number is larger than the resource quota, then obviously you won't be able to run your job. Um, Another question is, uh, do we need to install NVIDIA drivers on the node before using GPUs? Correct. So uh, there, are, uh, there are a few things that you need to install before um, called the uh, NVIDIA, tool, NVIDIA container toolkit, as well as the NVIDIA drivers to make sure that uh, you can run jobs on, on GPUs. Um, so you, you can look it up. We even have this document in the run AI documentation. I, I can share it. Um, 
and this also answers the, the other question. Yeah, I see a question here about uh, NVIDIA Docker. So this is also a very great command line um, to use if you don't want to run on Kubernetes, you just want to run a container on GPUs. Instead of using the regular Docker CLI, you can use the NVIDIA Docker CLI, which is built for you know, running on, on GPUs. Um, I see also an interesting question here about using schedulers like Slarm instead of resource quota. Um, this is interesting. Um, for those of you who are familiar with Slarm, Slarm is a, an open source scheduler that was built um, you know, a while ago for HPC world, for the high performance computing world um, before you know, the people actually start talking about you know, AI and, and deep learning. So Slarm, is um, it, it's a scheduler with a lot of capabilities. It wasn't really designed for cloud native technologies and Kubernetes and containers. It does support containers, but it does not support Kubernetes. So it's, uh, I would say, belong a bit like to the old world instead of like the, the new one. Um, and yeah, I think we, we have a lot of questions, but maybe we can, we can uh, continue with the demo and, and I'll get some of these at the end. Uh, so we saw that we have our job defined. Um, it's going to run a container from this image, allocate one GPU on this namespace, and then train my deep learning model. So how do I run my job? I can go and clear the screen. I'm going to uh, run the kubectl apply dash F to say the file, and then I'm going to say I want to apply this YAML file. So when I run this command, kubectl apply, this will then create the job resource on my uh, run AI, oh, sorry, on my team A namespace. Um, so I can go and then run kubectl get jobs dash n for namespace on team A. And I see that job one was created, okay, 14 seconds ago. Um, and it didn't complete yet. And this is expected because it, this job can run for you know a couple of hours. So it started, but it didn't complete. Now a job in Kubernetes behind the scenes also runs a pod. So a pod is like the, the, the smallest entity in Kubernetes that will go and actually run a container. So if we can go, if we go and run kubectl get pods in the, run, uh, in the team A namespace, sorry, uh, we would see that we have one pod running, okay? So this job, job one, created a pod for us. And this pod is in running state and it's running for 47 seconds. And I can go now and run the kubectl logs. Oh, you know what? Let's first describe this pod. So we see what's happening here. So I can run describe pod and the pod name. And I can see that you see both the limit and request are set to one GPU. Um, I see that it successfully uh, uh, you know, pulled the quick start image. It's going to schedule it on this uh, uh, worker node on uh, this GPU 3G worker node and the container was created and it already started, right? So I can then go and we can now go and look at the logs of this pod. So let's just uh, get the name of the pod again, get pod, because it has like a, yeah, a random name here. I can then run the kubectl kubectl logs and the pod name then dash n team a and i can add the dash f for follow this will follow the logs uh, as they run so this shows me that indeed my uh, uh, model is now being trained uh, so these things that you see here the losses um, this is what happens when you train you know a neural network a deep learning model um, it will go and try to guess you know what should be the correct answer for each of these images and then it will go and correct itself so we should see that uh, you know the accuracy is uh, is getting higher and at the end of the day you know it has a lot of steps and different epochs and it will eventually just finish once it finishes training on all of the data set so this can now stay running uh, now a few cool things about jobs we saw that we created a job and the job created a pod. Kubernetes for jobs does have some kind of auto recovery mechanism out of the box. So if I go and wait, let's go and, and see the, the pod again. If I go and now try to delete this pod, and this is in the team 
uh, a namespace, this will delete the pod, but it will not delete the job. So the job will still stay up and it will see that the pod was deleted and it will then automatically create a new pod for me. So this is good because, you know, sometimes you would have, if you want to run on like spot instances, or maybe there is some reboot on the, on the node or something happened, um, then Kubernetes will make sure to um, spin up a new pod uh, instead. Uh, so it has this capability. The job is you can look at it as like the manager of the pods. And so we were able to run a job. We saw that it's, uh, it started training and it's used uh, uh, one GPU. And you see if now we run the get pods again, we now have a different pod name. And this is now is running for 10 seconds. So this is the auto recovery that I told you about. If we want to completely delete this whole activity, we should delete the job. So we can go and run kubectl delete job, then it's called job one. And once I delete the job, indeed, if I look at the get pods, I won't yeah, see this one is terminated and then we won't see any new pods. And uh, this will now be deleted. And if I look at the get jobs, yeah, I won't see a job anymore. And um, so we saw that it's possible, right? You can train a deep learning model on Kubernetes. You can use GPUs, right? Um, and you can, um, have you know a separation between teams you can give different quotas to each namespace assign different users to, to each namespace and then make sure that you don't have starvation between the teams so this is what works <laughs> right now let's see what uh what doesn't really work so and, and somebody here mentioned mentioned slarm uh, every, uh, previously so so this uh, this can be relevant and, and interesting so I'm uh, going back to where we were, we looked at the demo. Uh, so what's missing, right? We saw what's working, now what's missing. And um, so this is interesting. This is a graph that we got from a real customers of, of ours. It's a, an automotive company in the UK. And this shows um, the, um, the usage of GPUs for multiple data scientists in the organization across 24 days. And what you can see here is very interesting because, you know, you can see that user one for a few days didn't use any GPUs. Then suddenly he wanted to use about 16 or 17 GPUs. Then the day after he used like five or six, then he used like two for the rest of the time period. While user two started with zero, then it used about 17 or 18, then again, went completely um, to like two or one GPUs. And you see that the, the patterns are very different. You're like, this guy didn't run anything for like three weeks and only then he started using, but um, using much more GPUs, right? Using like 22 GPUs. So the, the point here is that with Kubernetes, it only provides uh, a way to give static allocations of GPUs, right? You can set a static limit for the for the namespace of using um, you know two GPUs or three GPUs or whatever. And then each user can then when he defines the job ask for how many GPUs he wants. But um, but this is not good enough because these static allocations does not really make the researchers productive because let's say one day um, you know, you know, we have one user that wants to use more GPUs and the other user is not currently using any, why not give this user all of the GPUs in the cluster? You know, it's just a shame that they're sitting idle because first of all, they're very expensive. Second of all, you know, he has uh, a model that he wants to train and, and he can't, he can't get more than what was assigned to him. Right. And just to see that indeed, this is clear. If we go and now let's go and edit this uh, job YAML again. And let's try, let's see what happens if we try to run on two GPUs, because currently, you know, you know, we deleted the job, no jobs are running on, on the cluster and we have two GPUs in each node. So I, I want this guy from team A to run a job on two GPUs. So I can go and run the kubectl apply on this AI train job. And the job was created, right? So if I run the kubectl get jobs, I should see it here, okay? And it didn't complete yet, obviously. But now let's see the pods in this namespace. And we see that there are no pods. 
right? And let's see why. Let's describe this job one. I'm going to describe the job, job, and then job one. And I will see here in the events, you see that the, the container didn't start. Why? Because we exceeded the quota, right? We asked for two GPUs. However, we are limited to using only one for this namespace. And, and this is a shame because there are free GPUs in the cluster, but you know the, the configuration um, in Kubernetes does not let me use more than what I were originally assigned with. It won't look and see that currently there are more you know, idle GPUs in the cluster, so we would just let you use more. So you know, this is one of the main um, limitations. But let's go uh, back to, yeah, where was that? Okay, to, my, to the slide. So we saw that the patterns are, are very different. And, and like you understand by now, hopefully, you know, Kubernetes is the de facto standard for container orchestration, but it lacks a lot of capabilities for AI and deep learning. For example, automatic queue and, queuing and dequeuing, managing multiple queues, um, some fairness scheduling algorithms. Um, setting pr pr uh, priorities and, and policies, um, preemption of jobs. So what, what does these things mean? It means that um, ideally what we would want to achieve is to set priorities for different users, you know, based on who we th think is more important and we want to make sure it gets more GPUs. Uh, but then let's say if the cluster is currently empty and even if somebody has a lower priority, you know, why not just give him, let him use all of the GPUs but you know, if suddenly somebody with a higher priority goes and try to use and allocate GPUs, then we will see that this guy has a higher priority, and we would then we want we would like our scheduler to automatically preempt a job of the guy that has a lower priority and allow the new job of the guy that has a higher priority to run instead and use GPUs. We want something more intelligent that will help us utilize these very expensive resources better. And these things does not uh, uh, come with the default Kubernetes scheduler, right? So for a bit deeper into Kubernetes, Kubernetes comes with a built-in component called uh, Cube Scheduler. And this is the scheduler that is in charge of scheduling pods on nodes, right? So this scheduler, based on the definition of the pod or a job, it would see if the job is requesting, let's say one GPU, it will look for uh, a free node, you know, a node that has a free GPU and then we'll schedule it on it. But it does not have this automatic queuing and dequeuing. It, it, it cannot manage multiple queues. It does not provide you a fairness algorithm to make sure, sure that the researchers um, fairly use the, the GPUs in the cluster. Um, so, so just to, to dive a bit deeper into this and, and explain, uh, Kubernetes, again, it was not designed for this. It was not built for running deep learning train jobs. It was built for you know, deploying microservices. So, uh, so it's, it's just not what it was meant for. However, you know, containers obviously provide uh, a large advantage and, and obviously uh, is, is very good also for AI and, and deep learning. And we saw that you know, all the, the AI and deep learning popular frameworks are all adopting containers. And, and it's great, like researchers like using containers. It helps them, you know, easily run their jobs um, and make sure that they will run exactly the same way on, you know, their local environment, on um, maybe some cloud cluster, some on-premise cluster. Uh, so it has this portability. It's very easy and, and, and quick to spin them up. So, you know, they want to use containers and Kubernetes, you know, is the, the best container orchestration. But again, it was not designed for this. So what, what does it mean scale out or you know, scale up? So scale out, it means that right, Kubernetes was designed for deploying microservices um, and making sure that these services stay up and alive and they can easily scale and they can then support requests of you know, users. Um, but it was not, it does not, it's not scale up. Scale up uh, systems, um, they enable workloads that require you know, a lot of resources and sometimes distributed resources to coexist and efficiently, um, you know, some of them might wanna use um, you know, lower, fewer resources, some of them want, might wanna use a, a bigger uh, uh, 
you know, it's a group of resources and, and it is not built for, built for this. So uh, to go a bit into detail, uh, what's missing? Um, something called bin packing and consolidation. So Kubernetes doesn't currently take care of that, but um, we would want to make sure because we know that some researchers might run very large job that will are asked for a lot of resources and some other researchers might run you know, smaller jobs that will ask for less resources, we would want um, some bin packing algorithm to make sure that let's say I have a, a node with two GPUs, um, like two nodes with two GPUs each, like we had in, in our case, and somebody asks for, you know, a one GPU and then another guy asks for one GPU, it's better to, to schedule both of these jobs on the same node to free up the other node. And then if suddenly comes up, you know, a larger job that asks for two GPUs, it will be able to run. Where if you don't have any bean packing and Kubernetes would just do this randomly, it can send, schedule the first job on the first node and the other job on the other node. And then we won't have two GPUs available. We, we only have one GPU available here and another one here. So this is bean packing. Um, another thing is, um, yeah, and, and this also relates to backfill, backfill uh, scheduling. Uh, also elasticity. So sometimes, you know, as you as researchers or as data scientists, um, you know, if you have more resources, a lot of more GPUs available, that's great. Maybe your model can run faster and it will finish faster. But you know, you don't want it your job to just wait in the queue until 10 GPUs are freed up. You want to say, okay, if currently there are only five GPUs available, no problem. Start my my uh, job on five GPUs and let it expand and shrink based on the availability in the cluster. Kubernetes does not provide this elasticity. Um, and another thing is, is gang scheduling. So sometimes because we might have multiple nodes and we don't have, and we have you know a limited number of GPUs on each node, let's say we have two nodes with, with two GPUs each and somebody wants to run a job with that um, ask for four GPUs, then you can't just run one container and use four GPUs because each node has only two. Um, but there is a concept called gang, gang scheduling or distributed training um, that again, Kubernetes that does not really support out of the box. Um, but ideally we would like Kubernetes to help us schedule multiple containers, each container on each node. And then each container will utilize GPUs on the node that it's running on. And we would want Kubernetes to um, make sure that these containers are starting together, then ending together. We want to aggregate the logs and results. So these are things that are required for deep learning, but are not um, are not available with Kubernetes. And the second challenge is scheduling for batch jobs. Um, so again, batch jobs is the concept of like we talked about before. You know, we we want a job to run to completion. We don't want to run a deployment or a pod that will just run forever in the background. So yeah, Kubernetes does have the job resource and we used it and, and it's it's and it's nice. You know, it has this um, auto recovery mechanism um, and it does free up the resources, you know, upon completion, but it does not allow you uh, to queue and launch when resources become available in, a, in an intelligent way and, and manage multiple queues. Um, um, and you can set, you know, fair share policies and priorities and decide which jobs will wait in the queues and, and which job will start instead. Uh, and lastly, there is another called, concept called topo topology awareness, and this can also affect the performance of our jobs. You know, we talked about GPUs, but obviously these nodes um, they have both GPUs and CPUs. And for deep learning, some workloads, and even in the same workload, um, you know, at the beginning, you might need to do some you know, data processing or something that does not require a GPU. This will run on CPU. Then for the training itself, um, it will run faster if you have a GPU. And there are some internal topologies within a node and also in a cluster and uh, like with internal communication. And, and if your scheduler is aware of these topologies, it can make sure to schedule your jobs, you know, at, at considering this topology and then make sure that the performance would be, uh, would be best. So these are all concepts that 
are, you know, they came from the HPC world, high performance computing. Um, we also need them in AI and deep learning and Kubernetes does not provide all of these things out of the box. Um, what we did, and I didn't talk a lot about Run AI, but Run AI, we actually built a platform uh, for managing um, AI workloads um, on GPUs on Kubernetes. So we actually, we built our own Kubernetes scheduler so we said we you have the the cube scheduler, which is the default scheduler of Kubernetes, which is what you have in default with, with, with every Kubernetes cluster we, you install. We created our own Kubernetes scheduler that can be installed next to the default scheduler, and it provides these HPC concepts to Kubernetes. So managing multiple queues, managing priorities, um, you know, topology awareness, um, uh, preemption, fairness algorithms, all of these things. Specifically for deep learning and AI, um, we uh, provide them on, on top of Kubernetes. So um, if you're interested, of course, you can go and, and check this out, check this out, uh, and read a bit more about about Run AI. But I hope that you know this was helpful and and you have some better understanding on what you can do with the default scheduler of Kubernetes and and what you can't. Um, Let's see, I have some other questions here that we didn't get to yet. Um, so there's a question about what's the difference between Run AI community version and, and enterprise version. We, we don't have a community version. Um, Run AI is, is a commercial platform and uh, you know you, uh, it does not have a free version. Um, however, if you know this sounds interesting for you, uh, Gian, then you know we can reach out and we can discuss, uh, you know, and, and tailor a, a plan for your needs. Um, another question from an anonymous attendee, is the entire GPU assigned to a pod for the duration of the pod's runtime? What if your job does not need a whole GPU? This is actually a very good question. So this is also something that we, we didn't, you know, discuss, but Kubernetes does not allow you to fraction a GPU. Um, so um, uh, with CPUs, you can ask for less than one CPU, but with GPUs in Kubernetes, you can only ask for whole GPUs. And for people who are familiar with GPUs, GPUs are um, sometimes very, very, very powerful. And, and sometimes you would have specific workloads that don't really need all of this compute power and all of the GPU memory. So with default Kubernetes, you can, you can only allocate a full GPU to a workload, and then your workload might utilize only 10% of this GPU or 15%, and that's it. And it's, a, it's, it's really a shame. Um, with Run AI, we, by the way, do provide a way to fractionalize GPUs and then run um, jobs on fractions of GPUs, and this can also help you get you know, better utilization. Um, another question here from Muhammad, do you know any container for CUDA 11? So definitely there's a lot of containers for CUDA 11 and uh, you can go maybe, if, yeah, we have a few more minutes. Um, I'll just show you if you go, I, I recommend either go to, to NVIDIA NGC, yeah, and, uh, or just go to Docker Hub. And then you can look for, let's say you want to use TensorFlow or you want to use, you know, PyTorch. You can just search for the image that you want to use. Let's say I look at TensorFlow and then at the tags, you would see the version of, te of TensorFlow and this correlates with some version of CUDA. So I don't know if it would say it here. It will say it in Docker Hub for sure. So if you go to Docker Hub and you search for say TensorFlow, then you will see that if I look at the tags, uh, where is that? Yeah, it should say that, yeah, and you see some of these uh, images are built in with support for GPUs. Some of these already have Python 3 on them. Um, it should also, yeah, of course, but anyways, yeah, you should have, different versions of CUDA. You can just search for NVIDIA CUDA and then here in the tags, you would see like CUDA 11.4, CUDA 10.2. Um, so you can use any, any version that you want. You can start with this as a base image. If you remember, you know, we looked at our Docker file. So here I'm using CUDA 10.0, but you can just use the, the base image as NVIDIA CUDA 11 or 11.3 or 11.4, and then in going install any of your uh, you know, frameworks and, and dependencies. Um, 
how about using Kubernetes operators? So this is also something that we actually do in, in Run AI. Um, our installation is using an operator, but we created some CRDs, um, so custom resource definitions for, um, for Kubernetes. So for example, in the demo today, we saw uh, the default Kubernetes job, which is available for any installation of Kubernetes. We created a new resource, a custom resource definition called Run AI job that provides additional capabilities for, I don't know if, if people here are familiar with it, but for something called um, uh, HPO, hyperparameter optimization, as well as distributed training. So, you know, th this is also using operators and, and CRDs. Um, and uh, yeah, I think we, we answered the questions. Um, if anybody has any additional question, I see that the, uh, yeah, the YouTube channel for the Linux Foundation was also uh, posted on the Q&A. You should be able to go in and grab it. Um, I pasted the, um, the uh, GitHub repository so you can go ahead and clone it or fork it and, uh, and play around with it. And uh, yeah, if there are any other questions, uh, feel free. Um, this, is, uh, yeah, this is the time. Um, if not, then I guess we, we can wrap up. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Guy, for your time today. And thank you to everyone for joining us. As a reminder, as Guy just said, this recording will be on the Linux Foundation's YouTube page later today. Uh, so you can check back if you wanna review it or send it out to other folks. So we hope that you will join us for future webinars. Thank you so much again and have a wonderful day. Thank you guys for joining.